You ready to start? Yeah, let's do this. All right, let's start this. This is going to be a fun one. We get to talk about old stuff. Old man, old man Grand Blue Fantasy stuff. All right. Hey, everyone. Uh, welcome to Grand Blue Radio. This is episode number, hold on, 231. 231, good lord. Uh, it's been <laughs> an exciting about period of, what, 36 hours or so? Yeah, about, yeah. <laughs> It's oh boy! All right, a good chunk of those was maintenance. Yeah. So the actual start of the show is that this is a vibrating sheep uh, from Grand Blue underscore En. With me, as always, uh, crew member, uh, friend, uh, sometimes house guest. Hey, it's DJ. And so, all right. So this is one of the things that we were looking forward to this whole time. We've we've got the new raid release, and this is the first raid release since Bales Above for high difficulty. Like, we had the dragons last year, and those were pretty hard. And <laughs> they were, like, a little too hard, to be honest with you. And yeah, they adjusted those. <laughs> yeah, they did adjust those down. But we I now have... I don't think you can really adjust this one, because I think it's fine where it is. But let's I... talk about it. Yeah. All right, so we've got the Fallen Angel of Cunning, uh, who is Belial, and... Um, his animations are pretty funny to me because some if people haven't been staring at GB versus they're like, why is he doing all of this stuff? It's like, well, <laughs> I'm used to all these, yeah, yeah. We're, we're we're used to these from just watching a lot of Belial's when he released a GB versus. I mean, he was the best character in the game when he released, so yeah, yeah. He's still really good, but yeah, he's no longer like the best by a country mile. <laughs> he's not top one. Yeah. All right, so um. The battle in this quest is extremely difficult. Like, th they don't put this warning out very often. So you have to be at least rank 170. And I wonder if I can still do it, actually. If I'm still allowed to. Let's go to the edge lands. Uh, da -da 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 -da. But... Where are you, the edge lands? Here you are. For, uh, love map. Am I allowed to continue to do this again? Fall Angel Cunning? I am! I am! Sweet! I mean, it has a story uh, thing tied to it, so... Yeah. That's fair. So, um, I had quite the adventure on this one. I don't know about you, but this was quite the adventure. Um, and this one kind of got me ready for the Belial Raid fight. It's actually a really good uh, way to get ready for it. But also, it took me a couple tries for this one. Let's Let's be honest on this one. Um, yeah, it took me six tries to actually get it down correctly. It, so my first try doesn't count because there was an emergency maintenance that ended my first run. My second try, I tried something else different, and I failed it. My third try is the one that worked. Uh, like, Cerulean Chat says, I love his raid sprite is just standing there. It's like, that's how he stands in, in GV Versus. Uh, but yeah, so the... The concept of this prepares you pretty well for how you're going to um, fight the raid, where it's like certain special actions are boosted based on the level, and he can't be removed, but you have uh, what you need to do is cancel omens, and then when you when you try and delay him and it hits, you get the absolute snot kicked out of you if you're not ready for it. Let's uh, do one of these. With a small quick. caveat. Uh, small caveat is that it has to be directly caused by a button. Yeah, and so here's me hitting a delay button. Ow! <laughs> that stuff hurts, dude! Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're kind of bleeding right there, yeah. I'm, I'm bleeding a little bit. Anyway, so I'm just going to demonstrate something and then retreat, basically. So let's just swing. Try not to die. I didn't die. Yay. And so there's two things to show off. One, uh, so it's a 12 million damage uh, um, omen break. Two. And the raid's like 15 million, isn't it? It's 15 million in the raid. Uh, this is the best change that they've made to V2 in a year, where it actually tells you without having to click in how much you have to do in order to break the omen. My favorite so thing watching you yesterday doing this was you clicking in every time. 
So. Well, no, I was doing it to check on the uh, actual effect of it, whether I could block it or not. Because this one is 16 hits to randomize. Some of them are white damage, etc., etc. So. Anyway, so um, I do like how this one was designed. I um, think that it's decent, but not crazily like. Uh, it, it still leaves some surprises. Oh, oops, I may have uh, failed the Goetia. I, I was hoping that you would uh, accidentally trigger uh, delay. Let's go on. Anyways, but the thing is that you know I, uh, this introductory quest is not nearly as BS as the introductory quest to Beelzebub was, and that's that's important. It took me days to beat Beelzebub the first time. It's like why? Why do I need to freaking um, fatal chain so many times? And this was old fatal chain too, when you had to act as soon as you hit a hundred, it just activated. You know, I actually don't remember old Beelzebub that much. I I remember it distinctly. It was it was bad. I got that one second try. I'm like this one. Mhm. Mm Cause uh, at forty percent, well, at fifty percent, he Debo uh, wipes and then puts a thing where he cannot pass forty percent unless you do a certain amount of damage in one element. Mhm. Mm and so you have to do like a a minimum amount of damage uh, before you can actually uh, go on. But um, so that's the introductory quest. Um, let's go talk about the actual release of Belial and why, within an hour of his release, the game went down for emergency maintenance. And, um, this one's... This one's the not going... It's not going to be something that I am going to show visually, but there was a bug um, on release where if you had a skin on a character who did a, a no-damage CA then uh, I don't know how the code worked or anything like that. Um, it would just instantly kill anything you fought, including the training dummy. Yeah. It's like, uh, it wasn't, it was discovered because Korwa is extremely popular, but it was found to work with anyone from Diantha. It worked with any skin on a Diantha. It worked on Lunaloo. Uh, I'm sure it probably worked on Cardcaptor Sakura. Okay, Sakura doesn't have skin, though. Yes, yeah, she does. Does she? She has three of them. I don't remember this character at all. She, well, you you remember uh, Card Capture Sakura though, and every episode she has a new outfit, so they wanted to uh, replicate that. Where is it? Is it my inventory for outfits? Yes, it is. So she has, I believe, it was like the windy outfit she had. Thunder wind. Eh, it's, thunder the, it's the cat. Watery. Yeah, the thunder and the watery. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell you how much I remember this character because uh, this character doesn't do much. Yeah, no one uses that character <laughs> except to try and lower their raid lockout. Anyway, um, and so you know, there's not much to say about it. They, they took the game down. They took away people who were exp they took away the awards from people who uh, uh, abused the exploit. Um, <laughs> and I mean. If you've played games for long enough, these bugs just happen. You just uh, you accept that sometimes these bugs just go wild, and it's about you know managing them and making sure that you uh, don't let people who use an exploit go too far. And so you know people who were essentially just joining every PBHL or GOHL in sight and just abusing this bug, they had a they had their accounts suspended and stuff taken away. Um, as far as I understand it, people who one shotted Belial for their first clear with this bug, kept the trophy, but did not keep the actual items that dropped from him, uh, according Wait, to... He, he dropped items? Um, for the raid, yeah. Oh, okay. Some I people would clear the raid with it. I thought you were talking about the solo. No, not the solo. Like, they would do the solo, and uh, that... What, what essentially happened is, as soon as this bug was discovered, people who were just like, oh, this works, they went in, they one-shotted the... Um, uh, they one-shotted the solo to unlock the raid, and then they joined the raid and just one-shotted it in order to get their clear. Um, and so from what I saw of people who did that once, they got their tro their their trophy stayed, but their horns from Belial got taken away. Um, I mean that's understandable. Yeah, and so, uh, I just like to point uh, and just reminisce. 
back to two other game breaking bugs that we've uh, lived through that were also like they were hilarious in my opinion especially since of, uh, because of who could abuse them um so the first one if you remember the release of Elysian and so the soul soloist skill back in like 2017 I mean, Soul Solace was still uh, existed before that, but but for some reason, there was a point in time where if you Soul Soloisted, um, then bosses that were normally immune to lethal hit would lose their immunity somehow. Yeah, Miria was really good for that day. Miria and yeah, well, also Ayata, but Ayata, I don't count him because he's already good. Uh, also, uh, uh, Toyen, because Depravity also has lethal hit on it. Yeah, but Miria, though. But Miria. <laughs> so that one was uh, was eventually dealt with. Uh, not necessarily with the quickness. Uh, it was dealt with, though. And people who abused it got the same kind of treatment, where it's like, if, we've, if we find you uh, have been going from, like, uh, Proto-Baja to Proto-Baja, one-shotting everything... With this, yeah, we're gonna take your 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 stuff away, and we're gonna suspend your account while we investigate just how much stuff we need to take away. But it was so funny seeing those videos where it's just a bunch of rac. What is it? It was it raccoons from Miria? I believe they're raccoons. Yeah. <laughs> they just come out and murder things. Yeah, they're uh, persuasion. <laughs> That's what it's called. Oh man. And then. So you said it was 2017 that happened? That makes sense. That, that had to be because that, that's when I... Uh, that was during AOD for that year. Oh, okay. And then the other one was a funny one also. Uh, because that one we actually knew what was going on behind the scenes. Like, we don't know what in the code was going on with um, the sudden removal of instant death immunity but when the journey drop shop came out we knew exactly why this one was busted so the boost to item drop rates the only when the journey drop shop first opened it was july i remember that because we were reading about this bug at the uh, yard house in anime expo so you only and had this the first time so we only had access to the first tier yeah and so you could only get a two percent boost to item drop rate in battle but people found out really quickly that for some reason the 2% boost to item drop rate was additive instead of multiplicative. So it wasn't, you know, uh, an extra 2% on, you know, if you had a 1% chance to drop something, it's now a 1.02%. No, no, if you had a 1% chance, it became a 3% 3 chance. 3% chance. And so people went, oh. Oh really? Is this how it's supposed to work? They would they went ham on nightmares, because that was back when nightmares still dropped gold bricks, and every nightmare you did had a two percent chance of dropping a gold brick. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, they're taking this away from people. Like one hundred percent, they're doing it. And hey, guess what they did? <laughs> I think like the only time they didn't take away was Balefest. Remember that? Balefest was yeah some. That one wasn't necessarily a game-breaking bug. They just looked at it and went, "Yeah, okay, fine, whatever. Go, just, just let Bale drop um, these weapons at like a grossly increased uh, rate." Camera okay, actually. Right. Sorry, go ahead. What were you gonna say? It was everything else in in, in that list too, but Bale was a, it was the biggest uh, one for uh, for that entire weapon series. Yeah, because people wanted the Bale axe because it was a good weapon at the time. Um, but yeah, like people were worrying uh, that it was an unintended thing and that it was going to get taken away from them, so they were just like, "Are we going to get?" our bail axes taken away from us because this is an unusually high drop rate. Like, something happened and we're just getting, like, SSR weapons left and right. And Camar just came out and he said, don't run from the treasure chests. And people were like, all right, open season, everybody! They fixed it, but it was really funny. Yeah. I've seen people just scramble, 30 people getting in a raid and killing bail really fast. If I remember right, it since it applied to that increased drop rate applied to the entire series, not just Bale. I'm pretty sure that's when I got my like Athena spheres, my collection of 
Oh, it looks like I have uh, 12 of them. <laughs> yeah, Katsu's in chat saying SSR weapons in Tier 2 raids were super boosted, and we don't know why. It's just that there were SSR weapons dropping left and right, and people were just like, well, I guess I'm farming this. Yeah, I remember one of the people in our in our Discord was noticing the, uh, like, getting bail axes, like, left and right. It's like, oh, maybe this is a thing. Oh, it was a thing. Yeah, but they didn't take those away. That pro because I think they had a meeting, and one, it was the weekend, and two, they were like, you know, we can just give them bail axes and like Athena spears. <laughs> it's I mean, not nowadays like nowadays we get we get those now, like uh, just incidentally, anyways. Nowadays we really do. Like we get them from Sandbox. We have them in the shop, so I guess it's fine. We just accelerated things a little bit. Huh. <sighs> But yeah, I mean, it's just, you play any long service game and bugs like this will just crop up. And it's about being smart about like knowing what is an exploit and will get you banned. Because, you know, it's like, oh yeah, I'm just going in and insta-killing PBHL. That's uh, a different level of magnitude than I have hit a bail and he somehow, for some reason has a 30% chance to drop a bail axe. Although, you know, people, once again, they, they had that apprehension. And they didn't really do it. They didn't really go ham on it until the uh, official um, the official source, KMR, was just like, yeah, go for it. Whatever. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, it, actually been, it actually has been a while since we had something like this, though. It kind of has been, yeah. Uh, I, like, people who play WoW remember a bunch of, like, really funny, uh, things that, um, you know, over the lifespan of, like, WoW's been out for, what, 20 years now? Something like that? Something silly. Um, where, you know, you just have a game that goes long enough, sometimes there's a bug, there's a lot of bugs, there's always bugs, and sometimes they break the game open, and then it's about response to them. Uh, World of Warcraft, um... There was a world boss that you that they didn't really think ab uh, about like having as a killable thing, and there was a mechanic for paladins specifically that said whenever you get uh, struck by a critical hit, it store you instantly um, will you you will instantly attack back. But it what they didn't account for was that one. Um, what happens if you get crit and you don't die from it from from it repeatedly? And two, what happens when you don't have your weapon out? So it was called the Reckoning Bomb, DJ, where as a paladin you would duel somebody and they would just punch. You would sit down, which automatically means that you get crit. They would just punch you. <laughs> you uh, in duels specifically, you would uh, it would end as soon as you hit one health, and so you and you would live. And so they would do this for like an hour of just repeating this cycle of just storing up these instant hits. It's a really funny video to watch. And I then see. and then he just walks up to the boss and he unleashes in the course of about th 2 or 3 seconds so many stored up attacks that it just it's it's hilarious. Uh, I'll I'll show you the video after this one, but it's a it's a famous uh um MMO bug in terms of just like, "Oh, that's a really funny use of uh mechanics. We should take that away." <laughs> yeah, that's not intentional. So <laughs> Oh yeah, so it was WoW that had the plague. Yep, um, that one was uh, Boiling Blood, I think? I forget, was the uh, um, World of Warcraft... There's a Score Esports video on it. Um, it was one. Of, it was like a Zul Jin plague? No, it, was a, it wasn't a... It was one of the troll instances plagues. Corrupted blood, not boiling blood. That's what it was called. Anyway, yeah, um, and yeah, uh, it's uh, it's just one of those things, you know. <laughs> I'm surprised that it's old. It's been this long since a, re a game breaking bug. Yeah. All right. So moving on from just the history of uh, like hilarious bugs in GBF. Let's go talk about the design of the Belial fight. So you watched me and uh, a few of our crewmates stumble through it yesterday. Oh, that was funny. 
And so here's the thing: the solo that flight. Earth flavor is going ham, by the way. Oh yeah. Th so there's an Earth uh, method of doing it that um, is actually pretty safe, but there's a really strict requirement for it. And so um, it's one of those things that we'll talk about later on. But the design of the fight in general, uh, I really appreciate because the biggest thing they learned from the Beelzebub fight, and I was hinting at this when we were talking about just how much easier it was to unlock this fight than the Beelzebub fight. The Beelzebub fight is actually easier, like the raid is easier solo than it is in a group because there are a huge, there's this long series of omen triggers that all have the same break condition and that break condition is fatal chain and it's really hard to get that many fatal chains in a row uh, and so uh the big thing that they learned from the belial uh, from that in the belial fight is that the belial fight every three turns has an omen and that omen starts with deal 15 million damage the next one is do 35 hits. The one after that is Fatal Chain. So it doesn't ask you for a Fatal Chain until turn 9. And turn 9 is a very reasonable uh, period of time to say, hey, you know what? You've probably Chain Bursted two times by now. I mean, instead of like every two, three turns, like <laughs> instead of every, above. Instead of every two or three turns like Bales above, like... It it got so bad in Beelzebub that essentially the way that people did the fight was by passing around the Typhon as dark um, dark Kengos, and they're just like yeah. that's the only way to be able to build Fatal Chain in enough time to actually like do it for enough of these triggers. And also, don't forget the triggers themselves were like five percent apart near the end. Yeah. But the thing is that uh, the figures being 5% apart, the good thing is you only need to, you need to break every other one and not the same one, but still. I it, it's yeah. Yeah. I mean defenseless. It's kind of bad still regardless. True enough. And taking some of middle damage along with that. Mm -hmm. Um and so th that's one big thing that I like about the Belial fight so far. Um that we did a, they did a lot better design-wise than Bales above. Another thing is so um the we were talking about this about like the screw grandal uh, grandalfon part of the design um so on the surface level uh, grandalfon is not very good at this fight um because the belial fight it centers around your ability to slow belial because as soon as belial hits six dots he wants to do one of the following things to you if you use before 50% then he gives you a 50% meter penalty and a what looks to be like a 100 or more percent DATA penalty. So you are yeah. crippled. You are just utterly crippled. If he does it after 50% and he has full dots, you just die. Yeah, you literally. I don't know why you did attach 666 damage to it and then you die. You should just. Flavor. It just kills you regardless, anyways. It's flavor. I know, but still, you just die, anyways. Like, your back row dies, too, with you? Yep. Um, and then, like, there's an anti-evoker mechanic uh, where for every character that has died in the fight, um, then Belial gains an uplift stack, which gives him an extra dot per turn. Uh, notably, as long as, you, as long as you slow that sixth dot, then you're going to be fine, uh, no matter how uplifted he is. So there are strategies that deal with that. Um... But yeah, the the uh, main thing about like the the Grandalfon penalty is that since he can't heal, and every time you hit a delay button, uh, your entire team takes six thousand six hundred and sixty six uh, plane damage, which goes through Grandalfon's extremely high defense. It's like, oh, hmm. And also, don't forget you pay uh, a penalty for entering the raid too. Yeah, you take nineteen thousand nine hundred and ninety nine damage upon entering the raid. Um, and you know, for the the bluesy way of dealing that with that when you have Grandalfon in the team is to just let somebody die, and you can't then do that. Grand... Well, you can. You, you can. You're just not su suggested to. Yeah, it's it's not suggested. It's discouraged by the design of the fight. There, people have found ways around it already, but we'll get to that later. Um, and so you know, this fight currently is about just delays. Um, wait, there's a dispel um omen uh, in there that I missed. So it's wait, is it fifteen million thirty five? 
and then dispel. It might be. I, I've missed one of the dispels. I'm sorry. In in the rotation, the fight's not on the wiki for me, so I can't tell you. Yeah. Um. Anyway, the point is that like. Uh, the, 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 there's interesting things that you have to build around compared to like Blucy uh, and Beelzebub. Uh, and the other thing is that they really, really, really didn't want you bringing Keelan to this fight. <laughs> they really didn't want you bring Keelan. So, all right. When you summon, um, when you summon, then. Be Belial counters with a uh, an effect that adds randomly between one and four turns to your cooldowns. Whether the skill is on cooldown or off cooldown, if it was if it was available to be pressed, well, it's now available to be uh, in one to four turns. And so, if you keel in, then it doesn't do anything. It it randomly changes the cooldown left on any of your uh, moves to one and four. To be fair, that could be useful in a one way of you already summoned a billion times already. True. Uh, and then they they did the um, the break bars thing with this one also. So at the end of the fight, there is a mechanic that they borrowed from uh, Violet Knight um, and Golden Knight, and also people who play FGO are familiar with it, like the anti one shot thing, where it's just like you've dealt with this health bar. Hard stop. Boss takes an action. Now you can actually hit the boss again. And so um, Belial at five percent hard stops you. Then the next turn he takes changes it so that you can take him below five percent, but it also eats all of your meter. It um, fills his dots to six. And makes it so he can no longer be slowed or delayed. And then it says, okay, now you can deal damage to me. So he declares to everybody who is still alive in the raid, all right, you get one turn left. Come at me. Uh, the six of you or however many need to deal 35 million damage to me in this one turn. And um, it's a little finicky. Like we, we lost one of our runs in order uh, because of not knowing the exact sequence where it's like, take the action that would bring him down to 5%. Then his next turn, he still doesn't take damage. Um, and he fills up his dots. And then the turn after that is the one where you actually can kill him. And so uh, we, we lost one run because of that. But, I mean, it's probably necessary in a game that's become so burst heavy as, uh, as GBF. And then the new keys that we got are also going to encourage certain kinds of burst so uh yeah yeah <laughs> so you know i I, fe I feel like they'll go back to this more and more often given that they've done it in two pride of the ascendance and one raid now um anyway so whoo it's a lot of interesting challenges to build around and then the one thing that I do feel a little annoyed by is, um, so back in original Lucilius, right, there were a small number of characters who could do certain tri uh, certain ordeals or mm -hmm. uh, trials. So, you know, like back in release, there were only like two characters who could do the two million uh, plane damage. And one of them was Threo and killed herself doing it. Um, there was, you needed to, um, do 30 hits. 30 hits was a little more possible, but still annoying. Uh, the main one I was thinking of was, uh, the CA reactivate thing, which only like two viable characters could do for a while. And so Ada and, a Ada and, um, a tormentor MC. <laughs> Um, Light was able to bring the maids as long as they didn't use skill one in, in, the, in a certain amount of time. And then Vajra. Vajra could do it, but then you were bringing in a four-star Vajra, and that was sad times. But anyway, like, it was it was really restrictive. And um, 
in terms of the restrictiveness of parties in uh, in Belial, it's actually it's less restrictive in some ways. The ways that it's restrictive now, um, you know, you're not locked to a class or anything like that, but your grid matters a hell of a lot in this fight. Uh, not just your grid, but your main hand, specifically. Because we talked about how when you delay in this fight, intentionally delay with a skill, then he'll do, you know, a total of... You have to prepare for taking 26,000 damage on your characters, right? Um, and there are two, three ways that to get around this and still get a delay. Uh, one is have the delay be an incidental, uh, like a, a side effect. Two is to use a summon, and we talked about how summons are discouraged in this fight. And three is to have the um, delay as either a reactive thing or a CA effect. So the side effect is basically the Grand Cag thing, where a, dis uh, a dispel also causes a delay. So yeah. when you dispel with Grand Cagliostro in the party, then her effect does not cause you to take a bunch of damage when it's you a passive. yeah it's a passive when you ca with someone like a six star thief or a fewer or i think valentine's clarice does it correct that also doesn't trigger the, the the whole thing and then the last one um is let's see so ca is that oh and reactive stuff so um Characters like Drang, Sturm, Tanya, etc. And so people are building around that in order to get as many slows as humanly possible without murdering yourself by press for pressing those buttons. Yeah, technically with, with Sturm and Drang, they are technically using a skill, but because it's reactive. Yeah, it's like how, um, I think, what was it, Counterclaw, I think, doesn't get six murdered in Beelzebub. It also does. Oh, does it? Counterclaw? Well, if if Beelzebub has the count, his counter up... Oh, that, that one. Will yeah. react to I was it. thinking about the... Um, what is it? Langolin Field portion. Uh, anyway, so... Um, the, the thing is, then, that puts a lot of pressure on your grid now. It, because, you know, we were just talking about this. Uh, there is now... There is a, a, a very important list of weapons that cause delay on CA now. So that it's a you're... very small list, by the way. It is, what, seven, eight weapons? And people are digging deep into the uh, archives for this one. So, for example, the Athena Spear does it. The problem with the Athena Spear is that you're taking 10% HP uh, deficiency as a result. But, but you live, so, you know, you can build around that. But the main problem is you're bringing a Spear class... <laughs> Also true. Um, then let's see. So my favorite one that people dug... I, I don't even know if I still have this. Let me go see if I still have this in a crate somewhere. Which weapon? Tsurumaru Kuninaga. Well, you can't destroy that weapon, so you have to have it around somewhere. All right, let's go search for SSR Water Katana. It's around here somewhere. It's not there. It's not there. Yes. But it's a token Rambu sword. I found it! I found it! It's in Tsuruvaru Kuninaga. So you'll see a lot of water kengos because of this. And so it it uh, is a way around where you are you turn filling your MC's meter into a delay. Um, then, did you know that the, US, the American wiki, the English language wiki, doesn't have this? But uh, we actually had to go through and look for it. And it's like, oh! This does have it. The freaking Carmelina Spear. <laughs> the Turpid Spear. Something that has just been in the, like, graveyard for, like, its entire existence. Because Carmelina was a release character. It has oh. delay on it. Uh, Wiki needs to update. Yeah, we need to update that on Wiki. Um, we found this out by looking on Japanese lists. It's like, is this true? Oh, it is! Hey, look! It has delay. Um, the one that our wind player was actually using was the ethereal bow. bow. Yep. Yeah. Wind bow. 
At least that's tied to a, you can u- use bow class. Yes. So he was playing Robin Hood. Oh man, I can't use do that with bow. I have to turpin sphere if I play wind in this fight. Oh no. I was telling Daryl about that last night. I'm like, yeah, this, this fight's kind of hard, a little bit hard on wind for delays. Well, at least you can monkey up after you uh, have um, done the uh, the delaying. But still, uh, there's also like uh, the the king of this in terms of just like if you have it, you are way better off than someone who doesn't have it. Is the Arsene that's been mentioned? Oh yeah, it's it's special uh, meter stealing. It's special meter steal, so it has a higher C- uh, hit rate. Um, it gives you meter back for doing it, which is very 100%. important. And um, the other thing is that it's a dagger class, which lets you play Tormentor. And so this thing is basically what's giving Earth uh, life in this fight that uh, for using for for using doing their normal BS basically, like they just essentially fill up on meter every turn that they can and arsen. And um, that's what lets them bring Lobelia in. That's what uh, unlocks all of the other stuff. Oh man! But you know, what was that? I find out if I have an arsen. Um, and then light. Oh, this is the second funniest one to me. Do uh, I you have know, you? I hate you for mentioning this. <laughs> look, look. I have one, and this is its time to shine. Okay. I can't believe this weapon's coming back. <laughs> it's back, baby. There it is. <laughs> That's the Lion King. The oh. king is back. Oh, why does it have clarity on oh, a second skill? It's so bad, except for this. <laughs> oh, baby. And the other thing is that since it's a fist weapon, you can run Monk with um, the Dispel Strike, which with um, Grand Cagliostro turns into a delay, which doesn't uh, which doesn't kill your team either. So it's just like... This is beautiful. <laughs> also, Noah exists, so you can just fill up on meter that way. Yeah, you can just fill up meter on Noah, and once you're on turn 10, then it delays twice. <laughs> They're going to make a Lion Con wielding character with delay on uh, CA this year, aren't they? For light, you just need CAG. Sure. Uh, but. You don't you need a little bit more than just CAG. You need to actually set up around CAG. You can. Like this is still so funny. I I'm applauding. Like I use CAG during the uh, the the normal fight, but I still needed to uh, find. Uh, I still needed like use the lay powder still because I I don't have enough uh, daggers in mm-hmm. order to throw at all because you only get ten uh, D spell daggers. Rune. Oh yeah, and then yeah, the the dark one is the bloody scar. And so the thing is that there's a lot of characters who are very viable in this fight. But this emphasis on CA on uh, CA for delay means that your main hand matters way more than it ever has. Yeah. Um. Like. Oh, you could grapple, you could grapple um, with Ladiva. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sure. But yeah, so it's a uh, it's an interesting fight in terms of design. I really do like the design of it. Um. You know, just like any other raid content in any other MMO, like there's a there's an elite number of people who have uh, already finished it and are just like, okay, well, I'm done. Uh, but you know, for people like us, like this is this is still a challenge. Uh, yeah, well, for Keith, you need you kind of need also. Uh, a six star, no, it's one ten. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, for, for C, because on CA, it's the CA effect. Her one thirty isn't really that important in this fight. Uh, you can take slash, but you can also just clear it. Um, the one thirty for a, an eternal that matters the most on this fight so far is Andre. Because, uh, because of uh, fire, fire switch. switch. 
Yeah. Henri is not a character in this fight until he's 130. It's kind of important, yeah. But yeah, you so... Just, you can't just 100 cut normally. With all of the stuff that we've said about this fight, I'm very much in favor of the design of this fight. Um, but th the next thing we're going to talk about then is the rewards that you get for actually doing this fight. So, you know, it's... it's I'd say it's, you know, about as difficult as Dark Rapture and Bales, uh, and slightly easier than Bales above. Release Bales above, I, I hated. Um, but now, the rewards for it, these chains. So let's talk about these, DJ. Um, have you looked into them that much yet? Nope, because they're not on the wiki. All right, so let's start. So some of these are really easy, and they all replace the third skill. So let's just talk about the third skill first, the third skill of a Dark Opus. Because the third skill of a Dark Opus has not mattered for a very long time. There was a clear best choice, there was a sometimes choice, and then there were bad choices. So, for example, Pendulum of Prosperity. Um, the third skill was Progression. Progression is situationally good. Um, it's much better against ele uh, null element bosses. It's, it's... Uh, better if you're playing like double primal or double magna and then the ca effect it uh which it adds to the opus itself means that if you could main hand it then the ca effect of uh, bonus elemental damage was actually really good but there's a lot of opuses that don't get main handed like wind no we go back to the nobody wants to main hand a spear problem yeah I, I really wish they they need to make a good spear spear main hand class. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, there are no, good spear main hand classes, words. but no, those are words. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then the other ones were just they were so sad. Uh, like this one is multi attack up, and so it, it's multi attack uh up on CA. And you're like, no. Just get why. Third skill, this one was Enmity, so certain people could do it for Enmity if they wanted to, but in the main, in a lot of cases, Enmity is very all or nothing, and so for the general case, you wouldn't really be using this. CA effect is not that great. It's and the, not yeah. even in the of 30%. It's, the CA is straight up bad uh, in terms of like, yeah. And then... Basically, if you didn't use e any of these, then you just defaulted to Pendulum of Strength, because it's just generically in, um, like eighty percent or so of situations. I'm just pulling a number out of my ass for that one. Better than all the others. I mean, ha most of the time you're in high health. If you're not, you're in, you're in very low health. There's no in between, really. Yeah. And even in between. You still get a boost from being in between. And so one of the things that sort of killed um, the Dark Rapture as a fight was that there's there's like no situation really where you want to switch between these. Um, the like the only prosperity ones that I can think of that well, the the main uh, classes that actually use this as a main hand, Earth because Heart main hands are awesome, and giving your Earth team a chaser on CA is awesome. And then sometimes water. Sometimes. And so, yeah. The, staff, that, right? What was that? Staff. Water is staff. Yeah. Water loves staff. So these chains are a big change. And the thing is, they, they, they have to be able to unseat stamina. Because that mean, it means that they're, you're replacing the third skill and you don't have stamina anymore. So let's start there. All right. So the Cutting Devil's Horn, uh, they dropped from Belial. I only have two of these. I can't buy one yet. Uh, the um, actual, the other part of it is super easy to get. The Genesis Fragments, most of us have a billion of them by now. All right. Chain of Temperament. This one is Attack and Crit. Uh, it's medium. It's, it's useful. It's useful. Uh, but it's not exciting compared to... Uh, Stamina, like if it if you use your opus to complete your crit grid, then it frees up a slot, and you know giving your team keen on CA is is all right, it's fine. Um, I haven't seen that many videos or like theory crafts of this weapon yet because it's so, it it's Not amazing. It's something that is easily replicated by other weapons in the game. 
other characters existing. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. So Chain of Resto, uh, it's Majesty, something that it, this is something that an Opus already has. Well, Majesty, you need the HP for this fight in the first place, man. Yeah. Um, and then uh, refresh. And let me go see what the refresh actually is on it. Let me see on game with. Uh, da, 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 da. Well, while I look, like, let's see here. That's not it. That's not it. Hold on. Uh, but unless the number is like 3,000 a turn, there's very little reason to do this. Uh, there it is. I found it. Uh, it is a 1,500 uh, heal a turn. That's not. That's average. That is that is what you get from something like the blue sphere, which is good. But but yeah, I gotta, you'd rather be in hand and blue sphere because it also has other effects. Yeah. So well, we're gonna move past chain of restoration. Glorification is um also a kind of weapon that exists already. Big boost to CA specs and chain burst specs. Uh, it is. Hold on, let me. It's a it's a, a thing that already exists. It is. For at skill level twenty, it is fourteen and a half percent CA damage, seven point eight percent CA cap, and then like seven the uh, seven point eight percent chain burst cap. And it gives 30% uh, CA damage and 10% CA cap on CA. And it's good for one turns. It's good for one turns. But here's the funny thing about being good for one turns. Let's move on. <laughs> Temptation. Right. At start of battle, various buffs to allies and a 30% hit to max HP. List of buffs, Tom. So the, the list of buffs, here, there's a very easy way in game to find where they are, to, to uh, just see what all You're the buffs a are. Summon? It's, it's exactly the same list as an existing summon. Oh boy. And it's a very good summon, so it's not like uh, this is you like copying a bad normally. This is something that gets summoned very often. So the list of buffs that you get from this is attack which is 50% attack um is it on normal or is it on separate let me make sure I'm right here it's normal i don't know about this one uh let's see here so defense which is also 50% ca damage chain burst debuff success rate um wait i have to look at mine to get the rest of them Because it's it's four star frayer because it also comes with veil and dispel cancel, uh, debuff success, <laughs> um, chain burst yeah. Uh, also skill damage. It's it's a list of thirteen buffs, <laughs> and you get that all on turn one, and it lasts four turns. Okay. And so remember how the. Um, previous chain that we were talking about had 7.8% CA cap up, and then on CA it was another 10%. Yeah. Yeah, Frayer covers that already? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, this one, that one is cool. Like, it actually, so here's the thing that I like about it. It's 13 buffs on turn one. And there's a character that I really like playing, Laz, uh, who asks for 15 buffs. Yeah. The, and, uh, the Gold Knight. Yeah, the Gold Knight. Um, wait, does Monica ask for 10? I forget now. But anyway, she asks for 15 buffs. Because of the requirement for 15 buffs, I cannot disconnect her from uh, playing with Chicken, which sort of limits her... Uh, her her team options, but with this, I can do almost literally anything. Uh, Monica asked for twelve buffs. Monica asked for twelve. Thank you. Well, Dom, you say that, but Chicken's still a really all around good character, she, and she, 
the, there's still a very limited amount of characters you can play in, in Earth in the first place. But the thing is that it means I can decouple the Golden Knight from Chicken, for especially for short stuff. So this is another thing that I specifically am doing, is that uh, a bunch of my CA cap up stuff is primal anyway. And so I'm going to make like a um, Tsuchi Noko team for one turns and two turns and three turns uh, with this with this opus, uh, the primal opus and this uh, this chain. And uh, I'm excited by the options that it opens up. And yeah, so on C8 it gives Dispel Cancel, um, which is funny because it already starts with Dispel Cancel on it, so, you know, whatever. Um, I mean, that Dispel Cancel's not going to last forever most of the time. True, true. But yeah, also, th- I, also I don't know what uh, fights you're going to be in that you need that multiple times, and also be able to take a 30% HP hit. Yeah, a 30% HP hit, and once again, like you always have to worry, wonder about the opportunity cost of missing out on a stamina mod. So that's something to think about. But uh, I'm very interested in this one, and I like that it opens up different possibilities. Uh, all right. Forbiddance is boost to CA specs, and you take damage on using a charge attack. And then on CA, it's uh, j- it gives you jammed. What's uh, the specs on it? Let me go take a look. That's, that's the crit one. This is the healing one. Oh, this is the wrong one. This is the uh, chain of falsehood. Where's depravity? Where are their notes on depravity? Do do do. Click. Let me click through. Sorry for not having all of these like on the palm of my hand. I always have I'm trouble. Really forbidden to thought. I always have trouble ch- uh, going from like the word forbidden over to the Japanese and stuff like that. So, uh, okay, red, color red. That's the important one. Uh, all right, so it is um, 100% Ogi, uh, CA damage up, 30% CA cap up, and upon CA, you take 10,000 white damage. It's a lot. <laughs> I think yeah, yeah. when it, I think when it comes to one turn stuff, I'll still. Try use temptation. And use temptation. Yeah. So temptation CA cap up. It is. Oh, it's not a CA. There is no CA cap up on it. It is just CA damage up. But it's also a generic ten percent cap up. Okay, that's where it is. Mm. I think I would still for one turns uh, go back to uh, the temptation one. Uh. All right. Depra- uh, depravity is really cool and interesting. So, depravity is plain damage to everyone at the end of the turn when your HP is 50% or lower. Um, it apparently, let's see, 50% no Ninzubun Hatsudo. So, for every character in your party who does it, is uh, they they do it. It does it once. It's a 1 million damage um, plain nuke. Hey, we can use, we can use this in, in uh, Lucy. And um, it says here, every turn at the end of your turn, you lose 5% of your hit points. Oh, so it's just a uh, uh, Prometheus sphere. Yeah. Um, it also says under these game with notes that it uh, deals damage to the enemy first and then you. So if you're at like 52% or something like that, it won't do it. See, if it wasn't about 5%, I would actually th- consider doing it. Mm-hmm. But I mean, uh, yeah, it's, with it's, my HP values, it's uh, that's a lot to recover from. This is this one I'm interested in using in Fire. Um, because Fire already has characters who assume that you're going to be taking end of turn damage every turn or already do it to themselves like Siegfried and uh, Kumbira so this will be interesting we'll see uh, because you know this one will go on the opus instead of me having to pack liar wings and gimp everybody who's not Kumbira 
I mean, it still has a taco mod, but... It's a smaller one. Uh, all right, and then the last one is Falsehood, which is... This one's the most interesting, because I think that whoever you talk to has a different opinion on this one. So it gives you 20% passive chaser as its third skill. Your entire team gets it. It is on the passive mod, and so there's a list of things that it doesn't stack with. Um, what el Name an element, DJ. Fire. So it does not stack with the following things. It doesn't stack with uh, Tsubasa when there's a uh, Petrify on. It doesn't stack with uh, Donua, Halloween Donua when there's a Petrify on. It doesn't stack with Kumbira's when she has a counter effect on. It doesn't affect um, Azazel's passive, uh, Valentine Scothaha for anybody who has a barrier on. Uh, it doesn't affect Sturm uh, and Frau when there's a dot applied. It doesn't affect uh, Rakam when he's um, using his uh, whatever it's called buff. Um, it doesn't stack with the Soul Remnant on triple attacks, which is kind of an important one. It doesn't stack with the um, Sky Piercer on triple attacks. It doesn't, yeah. There's, there's, like a a, there's also like a billion things that don't stack with ooh, the, 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 not Opus, the Astral. Astral weapons, th triple attack. Right. But the thing is that if you don't use any of those things necessarily, and uh, then um, it's passive 20% chaser, and on certain teams, that's amazing. Sharp hit to charge bar gain, though. So That's 100%, right? It is an actual 100% down. <laughs> and so for all intents and purposes, you will gain zero meter until... Uh, you gain some uh, some meter buff uh, stuff, or you use um, an yeah, instant standby. Auto, auto ignition, yeah. Yeah, so it has to say the words instant standby. So Katura will not work because she is yeah. plus one hundred percent meter, but Berserker works. And you know the uh, Opus is an a uh, wait the fire Opus is an, is a an axe, isn't it? Hold on. Yes. It, it is, I think. It is. Okay. Can you negative meter gain? Not anymore. You used to be they able to... They, they fixed that on Grand Cagliostra release. Because Kumbira would actually gain negative meter when she attacked. <laughs> she would lose meter on attacking. Yeah, that was funny. She actually went negative. Uh, but yeah, and then for all of that stuff, you can then get the very incredible Grand Narmea effect of double strike on CA, uh, on your CA specifically. So it gives double strike to your entire team. There are some really big brain setups that I've seen with this in order to give the MC as much meter as possible. Oh. So my favorite YouTube creator, Nemonade DJ. Yep. Uses Fior, Silva, and um, Isaac. S on turn four, Silva goes into the back row and brings in Maria Teresa, who then copies Isaac's meter to the entire team. Oh, I see. It's so funny. <laughs> I mean, Light has the easiest time with just have Noah target the MC. Um, I think in water, you can... Is it is it meter that Summer Monkey gives, or is uh, it... it was meter gain and also meter? I think so. Uh, I, Summer Monkey doesn't do it then, right? Yeah, it's just charge bar plus a hundred. So Summer Monkey doesn't do it. Summer Leona does. <laughs> and so you know you have to just like get some real big brain things going in order to try and activate this. Or, you know, you do it on turn zero with uh, um, with strike time, but I don't know if you want to build an entire opus just for strike time. It's funny. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so, like, that's the seven new chains. Some of them are pretty dismissible, but, like, the last three that we've talked about or so, the ones that we've really extensively talked about, Temptation... Um, depravity, falsehood, like they open up some team design space. It's really interesting. 
So even though it's you know horizontal progression because you st everything that we've said we we I've been repeating, you have to give up either stamina or progression for this. Mm -hmm. But those three like really seem worth the trade. I'm really interested in seeing more of these things happening, like uh, the chain of temptation. There is a zero button unite and fight set up uh, for the upcoming unite and fight with this thing. <laughs> it's like with Tsuchi Monica, no Kohama. It's with uh, Monica and uh... eight, eight Monica, and then I forget who the last one is, but it's. I, it might be just anybody, honestly. Does Dark have instant charge? Does Dark have instant charge that you can target the main character is the is the big question. And uh, I think, let's see, Clary's Grant's meter. Um, Not enough, though. Well, it's going to be zero meter. Well, actually, no, it's going to be a little bit because you get uh, a plus meter buff from her being on the team. It's what, 20%? 20%. So you can get 20% of your normal meter. Yeah, it is not... Um, it is not instant charge or anything like that. So her effects will not work the way you want them to. But yeah, interesting puzzles to fill, uh, to, to solve. Interesting things that you can, like, apply them to. And, you know, I, I see myself switching them around a lot. Which... Which is fun. I, the fight is fun, I, in my opinion. It's just the uh, right amount of challenging for me. Um, Rockham can do it. Wait, he can? Grants a fire, uh, ally, instant charge, and hazard ammunition. Oh man, let's go, Rockham! Let's go! <laughs> I'd forgotten about that. For guiding firearm. Oh, wow. <gasps> Gosh, you can, can do it. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha if he can do it because he copied Tiete, right? Or Seafon? Yeah, but it costs seven energy balls. But it's like, if you can do it with Gotcha why don't you just do it with Seafon? Because Gotcha means cooler in some ways. Or you can, well, it's then the also, you can also bring up the little girl and the por que no los dos. You can play Seafon and Gotcha Feet in the same team and just give everybody uh, double strike twice. That's sick. <laughs> Amazing. Gotcha. Bean can do anything. Tenth tech priest. Uh, all right. So, uh, anything else to say about like the Belial stuff, the Belial uh, release, etc.? Uh, do you want to talk about how it kind of discouraged uh, soloing? All right. So, there's two things I can think of that discourage soloing in the fight. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong on these. So, fifty percent. Um. Belial gets a buff that says he absorbs three of the elements, six elements in the game. And as far as we understand it, um, they come in pairs, and so they're not like true random. You're gonna get two you're gonna get three from the following list. Uh, it'll be um, Fire and Wind, I believe, are paired. Water and Earth are paired. So if you know he's immune to water, if he absorbs water, then you will uh, then he will not absorb earth. And then light and dark are paired. Um, it might be fire and water, wind and earth, but the point is that uh, there it's from a list of three and it picks one of the two. And so you are encouraged to bring at least four elements. Um, and then, yeah, so wh uh, whoever is getting their damage absorbed sits tight until someone clears the 15 million trial. Because absorbed is not a great thing. Yeah. And then the other one that I can think of is that at 5%, one of the buffs he gives himself is a defense buff based on the number of parties currently in the raid. And so it is a huge, huge, huge defense buff as far as I know if you are soloing. If you have you know made it past the 50% coin flip to see if you can actually do damage for the rest of the raid. And then, you know, the rest of red is actually that last turn. Uh -huh. is, uh, because that last turn, if you don't, you have to clear it that one turn. Otherwise, uh, you're dead. You just actually just die anyways. Mm -hmm. 
and so I don't I don't know how I feel about the no solo thing because uh, soloing does extend the life of a raid a bit because I mean there's six different ways and styles to solo um, Lucilius. There's at least two really reliable solos in Earth and Light for Beelzebub. And I think Dark and Water can do it. I just haven't seen like the easily replicable and relatively reliable ones. Um, and yeah, so I'm not 100% sure on how I feel. And also, the other thing is... How will they uh, do this for the eventual, you know, next year they they make the, uh, or next year or in two years they make the Ascendant Prayer version of this fight? I guess they'll just take those away entirely? Question mark? I don't know. Well, you have to, you have, in order for Ascendant Prayer, you have to do a special cost and, and everything like that. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. So they could probably just throw a, tri uh, throw a check on uh, if you're doing that or not, because mm -hmm. it, it really throws a check. It makes it so you can't, you have to solo it. Yeah, it, it is technically a different quest because uh, it also allows elixirs and things like that. So uh, I'm not 100 percent sure on how I feel about it not being uh, it having two like specific anti-solo mechanics. Um, I guess we'll have to sort of see how that uh, shakes out. Uh, anyway, I think that's it for the night, isn't it? Uh, should be. We are still waiting for the banner rollover. Yeah, so the banner rollover is in five hours. And, um, the leading indicator that we keep leaning on for this, uh, so it's, uh, it's gotta be any of the following things. Another Mugen, uh, uh some, some guy named Nahan... Maybe, possibly. It's not gonna be business Belial. <laughs> Maybe Igdra no not Igdrasel. <laughs> Maybe Dorothy and Claudia. <laughs> anyway. Um the the leading indicators that uh, are Grand Blue TV channel guest and Grand Blue's appearance and appearance in a rerun are all currently pointing to Nahan, so um, congratulations if that does happen to people who've been waiting a year for this, but um, I tend not to put a 100% guarantee that a character's coming out, so... I mean, we have four hours, we don't, we'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> this won't be up on YouTube by, uh, by that time. Well, this will be up on YouTube after that, uh, that uh, banner goes up, so... Yeah, yeah, well... I'll just stay up and post about it as soon as that happens. But yeah, um, that's it for this episode of Grand Blue TV Channel. Thanks for joining me and just talking about what was it like watching me get my back blown out, DJ? I I jumped in the call to make sure you remembered what omen you're actually looking at. <laughs> oh boy! Just like I jumped in the call to make sure you weren't sparking on the wrong banner. Hey, hey, I got me for you anyway, so I would have... Been yeah, but then you would, you would continue to roll. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so uh, we'll see you next week. Next week we'll have the new Dread Barrage ready and going. Uh, we'll talk about what happened in this upcoming Flash Gala. Um, and let's see here. It'll be the 25th. We'll actually know what the next event is going to be. Do you think we'll get Athena by that time right yet, or no? We should have Athena by then, but uh, because... I feel like they're going to release her by Dread Barrage. So those are the three things I'm predicting. Um, and yeah, DJ, at the end of the month, we're going to have our first swimsuit character. It's it's summer. It's summer, and so... Oh, man. What, what wildlife is there left to fight? <laughs> what sea creature is there left to fight on, a, on the shores of Auguste Day? Uh, we fought eels. We fought giant octopus. We fought a watermelon. Uh, hmm. we fought an oyster. We fought tuna, multiple, two different kinds of tuna. We fought sharks. Yeah, yep. Yeah, we fought a shark. We fought this. Wait, no. I think it's three kinds of tuna because there was that one fish that turns into sushi at the end. So there's an albacore, a bonito, and whatever that fish that was hanging from the uh, the thing was. 
Huh. We fought, yeah, we, we mentioned the oyster. We haven't fought clams, technically. We fought an urchin. A sea urchin and an oyster. So those are the... Hmm. <laughs> we also fought those guys from, from Gripping Freedom. <laughs> Which one? The, the the potatoes from Gripping Freedom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> On a boat. With their water dogs. With, their, the, with the water... The dog-powered water boat. <laughs> oh man all right anyway that's been it's been a fun episode we will see you guys next week when uh well there's gonna be a lot there's a lot that's happening over the next uh uh week um and in you know in a week and a half we have the comfy stream which i'll be uh translating as usual the comfy stream's gotta be fun. fun that's a it's a game show format this year dj Yep, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah, most about that. I wonder how many different meats they will have to eat and try and figure out which is the expensive one. Will they be I'm better at it? Will they be better at it than Sphere? Sphere failed every year that they did it. Like, what was it? It was six years running, DJ. <laughs> yeah, it was. A lo- they couldn't do it this year, obviously. And they couldn't do it last year either because I believe uh, one of them was in the UK already. Uh, go to Wookie. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So anyway, they, they, they had their YouTube channel up by then. Yeah. So. All right. Anyway, thanks everybody. <laughs>